This episode is brought to you by Brilliant. Of all the power sources available to man, none has been as extraordinary in energy yield as nuclear fission. In fact, a single gram of fissile nuclear fuel, in theory, contains as much free energy as the gasoline contained within a small fuel tanker truck. To date, over 400 civilian nuclear fission power plants operate globally, producing an estimated 2,700 terawatt hours per year, or roughly 10% of global energy generation. Despite several high-profile accidents and the associated stigma of radiation, from almost 70 years of operational history, nuclear power has proven to be overall the safest power source available, having the lowest fatality rate per unit of energy generated when compared to other energy sources. Early on in its development, fission-based nuclear power research was enveloped in optimism. It was seen as a potential source of cheap and near-limitless power, and while its initial use on large military vessels were successful, as nuclear power expanded into commercial use, large plants that required a massive support structure and personnel to operate were needed in order to make commercial nuclear fission power generation economically viable. These reactors could take almost a decade to construct and bring online, and by the 1980s, new reactor proposals would be met with constant opposition with concerns related to nuclear accidents, proliferation, terrorism, and radioactive waste disposal. This led to a period of stagnation for new plant construction and overall development. Though by the early 2000s, concerns over carbon dioxide emissions would bring about a renewed interest in nuclear power. And with this came a myriad of developments that are aimed at improving the safety and sustainability of large-scale reactors. However, in recent years, a new paradigm in how nuclear fission reactors are created and utilized is starting to gain momentum. One that has the potential to spark a new age of cheaper, safer, and more flexible nuclear power. To date, almost all nuclear power reactors extract energy from the process of nuclear fission. In this process, a fissile nuclear fuel is bombarded with neutrons. As the nucleus of the fuel's atoms captures a neutron by the strong nuclear force, it begins to deform resulting in the nucleus fragments exceeding the distances at which the strong nuclear force can hold the two groups of charged nucleons together. This tug of war between the strong nuclear force and the electromagnetic force ends with the two fragments separating by their repulsive charge. This in effect transmutes the original fuel atom into two or more smaller, more stable atoms. Simultaneously, as the forces that bind the fuel atom's nucleus are reconfigured during this process, around 200 million electron volts of energy is released. By comparison, even the most energetic chemical oxidation reactions release only a few electron volts of energy. It is this energy that is captured and converted to a usable form by a nuclear fission reactor. For most fission reactors, the isotopes uranium-233, uranium-235, or plutonium-239 are used as the nuclear fuel. This is primarily due to their availability in large enough quantities, as well as their ability to sustain a chain reaction as they emit neutrons themselves in the fission process. These isotopes are also considered fissible in that they can undergo fission under the bombardment of low kinetic energy free neutrons, or thermal neutrons. Because fission reactions are primarily driven by bombardment, establishing and regulating a sustained fission chain reaction becomes feasible through controlling the free neutron movement within a reactor. This characteristic allows for fission reactors to be throttled, making it well suited for electric power generation. The first practical nuclear reactor was developed during the early 1950s by the US Navy for propulsion on their new generation of submarines and aircraft carriers. Known as the S-1W reactor, it would see its first deployment on the USS Nautilus in January 1954. The S-1W was a relatively simple and compact design known as a pressurized water reactor. This configuration uses ordinary water kept under pressure at around 160 atmospheres to transfer the heat generated by fission to a lower pressure secondary system that generates steam from this energy. The steam is then used to drive turbines that can produce both propulsion and electricity. The fuel used for the S1W was enriched uranium that contained about 5% uranium-235. At this low of an enrichment, neutrons would need to be slowed down in order to increase the probability of a fission event and sustain a chain reaction. 
In pressurized water reactors, the high pressure water is used to moderate neutron energy by letting them undergo multiple collisions with the light hydrogen atoms in the water, causing them to lose kinetic energy in the process. The water moderator also serves as a passive self-regulating mechanism, as its ability to moderate neutron energy is reduced as it heats up and increased as it cools. The fission chain reaction can also be throttled by introducing neutron absorbers into the reactor core. This is typically accomplished by the use of neutron absorbing control rods that can be lowered or withdrawn, or by the use of soluble neutron absorbers that are directly added to the high pressure water. The success of these early pressurized water reactors in naval use would directly lead to their prevalence in civilian power generation. To date, pressurized water reactors constitute almost 70% of the world's nuclear power generation capacity, and it still remains the reactor design of choice for nations operating nuclear-powered navies. Within a decade, the two circuit designs of pressurized water reactors would be reduced to a single loop configuration with the introduction of boiling water reactors. Designed primarily with civilian power generation in mind, a boiling water reactor directly produces steam by heating cooling water with the reactor core. The steam is then directly used to drive a turbine, after which it is cooled in a condenser and converted back to liquid water, where it is then pumped back into the reactor core. Boiling water reactors still utilized water as the neutron moderator and chain reaction throttling via control rods or blades was also retained. What made this switch to the two-phase flow, single-loop cooling configuration of this design so appealing was its reduction in component complexity and operating pressure. Boiling water reactors generally operate at approximately one-half of the water pressure of a typical pressure water reactor, around 70 to 80 atmospheres. This is predominantly maintained in order to increase the boiling point of water at the core to around 280 Celsius. This lower operating pressure reduces the containment strength required of the reactor. Boiling water reactors also irradiate their containment structures far less than pressurized water reactors, extending the usable life of the materials it's constructed from. Steels, for example, become brittle over time under neutron bombardment, effectively reducing its useful lifespan as a pressure vessel. Boiling water reactors also eliminate the need for highly corrosive soluble neutron absorbers and their feeding systems that are part of many pressure water reactors. The relative low cost, simplicity, and inherent safety of boiling water reactors have made them the nuclear power solution of choice for several nations, becoming the second most popular reactor class globally, generating 20% of all yearly nuclear power. Around the same time period, Another less popular but cheaper to build reactor configuration was being pioneered by the British, called the gas-cooled reactor. In gas-cooled reactors, an inert gas is used to transfer heat from the reactor core to a heat exchanger, where steam is generated and sent to turbines. Neutron moderation is accomplished by encasing the nuclear fuel in either graphite or heavy water. Because no liquid cooling is required, gas-cooled reactors can operate at higher temperatures, making them more thermally efficient. The effectiveness of how they moderate neutrons also permits the use of less enriched uranium, with some reactors being able to operate purely on natural uranium, though at the cost of faster fuel burnup. Furthermore, they are able to be refueled while remaining online. While gas-cooled reactors generate less than 3% of total nuclear power annually, their primary appeal is their high thermal efficiency, compatibility with existing coal-burning power generation equipment, and the ability to run on lower-grade uranium allowing countries to fabricate their own fuel without relying on international supplies of enriched uranium. From the mid-1960s into the 1990s, most nuclear reactors constructed have been a variant of either a pressure water reactor, boiling water reactor, or a gas-cooled reactor. This generation of reactors that establish nuclear power as a viable energy source are considered Generation 2 reactors, with Generation 1 reactors being considered the first experimental endeavors into the technology. In the past 20 years, reactor designs have gone through evolutionary developments aimed at reducing cost and increasing the safety of Generation 2 reactors. These designs are considered Generation 2 Plus and Generation 3 reactors, and it was expected that they would reignite interest in nuclear power once again. Despite these advancements, almost all nuclear reactors to date operate with separate mechanisms for fueling, moderation, and cooling. They require large complexes that are carefully designed with consideration for power demand, fueling, operational logistics, safety, and security for the region they operate in. Their immense cost and construction time limits their deployment to large-scale, near-decade-long projects. 
Currently, the next generation of reactor technologies are being developed. Categorized as Generation 4 reactors, many of these designs operate at higher temperatures by using gases, molten salts, metals, or water held in a supercritical state as a coolant, dramatically increasing their thermal efficiency. Among these concepts are several proposed fast reactors. Fast reactors sustain their chain reaction with higher kinetic energy fast neutrons and do not require a neutron moderator. However, they do require relatively higher enriched nuclear fuels, though many of the proposed fast reactor designs can be fueled by a wider range of fuel elements from the actinides group. Generation 4 reactors also introduce new approaches to reactor fueling beyond rods of palletized uranium and plutonium. Molten salt and metal reactors, for example, can be designed to utilize nuclear fuels directly dissolved into their cooling medium, while gas cool reactors are becoming the focus for the implementation of a novel fuel packaging configuration known as a pebble bed reactor. Pebble bed reactors are a unique design that are powered by spherical tennis ball sized fuel elements called pebbles. The outer shell of these pebbles are composed of pyrolytic graphite, which not only serves as a neutron moderator, but also forms a structural containment shell around the fissile material that is twice as thermally conductive as copper, immune to corrosive effects, and can withstand high stresses and temperatures exceeding 2000 Celsius. What makes these pebbles so groundbreaking as a fueling technology is found within the graphite shell. Known as tristructural isotropic or trisofuel, this unique fuel configuration is characterized as a microfuel particle. Trissel fuel is an engineered particle that consists of a half millimeter sized fuel kernel of a uranium based fuel material coated with four layers of isotropic materials. These layers are deposited through a technique barred from the semiconductor industry known as fluidized chemical vapor deposition. These thin solid layers are composed of a 10 micron porous inner carbon layer that contains the fission reaction products a nuclear moderating and protective 40 micron pyrolytic carbon inner layer, a 35 micron silicon carbide ceramic layer to contain high temperature fission products and add structure to the particle, and another protective 40 micron pyrolytic carbon outer layer. Unlike other nuclear fuels, trissel fuel is incredibly robust and resilient. They can survive extreme thermal swings without cracking, as well as the high pressures and temperatures of fission cooling systems. Because of this ruggedness, they are capable of containing their nuclear fuel in even the most extreme predicted nuclear accident scenarios. Trisso fuel was first developed in the mid-1960s as part of the United Kingdom's Dragon Reactor project, where they were used in conjunction with helium to form one of the first high-temperature gas reactors, or HTGRs. Gas-cooled reactors work especially well with Trisso fuel because of their ability to operate at high temperatures while remaining chemically inert. When combined with trestle fuel, they offer incomparable levels of nuclear containment. Several Generation 4 trestle gas-cooled reactors are even attempted to reach higher operating temperatures near 1600 degrees Celsius in a configuration known as a Very High Temperature Reactor, or VHTR. At these temperatures, an unprecedented thermal efficiency as high as 50% is predicted to be possible. In addition, some of these designs are claimed to be passively safe and can maintain containment even under total system failure. Along with being more efficient and passively safer, Generation 4 reactors are ideal for a new paradigm in reactor construction known as Small Modular Reactors, or SMRs. SMRs are nuclear reactors of relatively small power generation capacity, generally no larger than 300 megawatts. They're designed with modularity in mind, using factory fabrication techniques that take advantage of the economies of series production and short construction times. While traditional reactors require long-term, large-scale on-site construction, SMRs are designed to be manufactured off-site on an assembly line and transported to the site and installed. They can be installed in multi-reactor banks to increase plant capacity, and they offer the benefit of lower investment costs and increased safety through containment. While no SMR plants are currently in commercial operation due to the hurdles of the current regulatory environment, their modular nature makes future plant size deployments of the technology far easier once a single module is approved for use. In March 2020, the Department of Defense had awarded three teams, BWX Technologies, Westinghouse, and X Energy, contracts to begin design work on a long sought after but never perfected technology, a mobile nuclear reactor. 
Called Project Pele, the program is designed around a two-year design maturation period where a Generation 4 reactor design will be adopted to small-scale mobile use. Within five years, the program is expected to design, build, and demonstrate a fully operational micro-reactor that can produce between 1 and 5 megawatts. These micro-reactors are intended to be transported into combat zones, generating power for remote regions, disaster areas, and military bases. They should be able to generate power within three days of delivery and be safely removed in as few as seven days. Their formal ability and the ability to safely tolerate direct attack is key to their design requirements. X-Energy in particular has promoted Trissel Pebble bed technology as the ideal choice for such a rugged reactor design. Trissel Pebbles are passively governed by negative feedback. They starve the reaction of neutrons as the temperature rises, independent of any active or mechanical control. Their high temperature resistant shell also mitigates the risk of fuel melting when exposed to catastrophically high heat. The fuel kernel can also be made from uranium oxycarbide instead of traditional uranium oxide to reduce flammability in cases of particle rupture. These characteristics keep the nuclear material contained and prevent runaway reactions even in hazardous environments. The structure of the reactor is also simple in design. The fuel is placed within a pressure vessel containing helium where it circulates heat through a steam generator located outside of the pressure vessel. The helium is inert and does not irradiate easily, making vessel rupture less hazardous. The fuel pebbles can also easily be replaced and evacuated from the reactor without shutdown by dropping them through the reactor by gravity. Project Pele is expected to serve as a pathfinder for the commercial adoption of small, easily deployable SMRs and mobile micro-reactor technologies, providing new tools for disaster relief and critical infrastructure support. In addition, the full-scale deployment of fourth-generation nuclear reactor technologies will have significant geopolitical implications for the United States while reducing the nation's emissions. One of the surprising aspects of designing a nuclear power plant is the incredible attention to detail in the systematic logic of how they operate. Each system must not only interoperate elegantly to meet power demands, but also be able to withstand a significant amount of failure while still maintaining safety with as little human interaction as possible. Evaluating logic is a critical part of design and it's fundamental to our modern world. And with Brilliant, building these critical thinking skills based on mathematical reasoning has never been easier. Brilliant has been tirelessly revamping their courses to introduce even more interactivity. And with their brand new logic course, you'll be able to spot logical fallacies, explore some strategic game theory, understand machine logic, and learn the symbolic languages of logic, all through hands-on problem solving with exercises that open up your mind and help you look at problems in a completely new way. Brilliant is my go-to tool for diving headfirst into learning a new concept. It's a website and app built off the principle of active problem solving. Because to truly learn something, it takes more than just watching it. You have to experience it. With this in mind, Brilliant has recently upped the interactivity on their platform to a new level. And they continue improving their courses to add more interactivity to them. With Brilliant, you learn in-depth and at your own pace. It's not about memorizing or regurgitating facts. You simply pick a course you're interested in and get started. If you feel stuck or made a mistake, an explanation is always available to help you through the learning process. If you'd like to try out Brilliant for free and get 20% off a year of STEM learning, click the link in the description below or visit brilliant.org forward slash newmind.